What is up now? And sideways, you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's another epi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with your beauties. And it is a rare time to breathe at Worlds uh, where we don't have games for a whopping two whole days. So we're going to go look through some of the craziest stats that have happened so far. We're talking champions. I'm going to list some player numbers. Mark's going to have to try and guess which player this is and the team's who have been dominating. We start with what is the most egregious and obvious when it comes to pick ban, and that is Kaisa and Zaya. 60 times someone has been picked in the bot lane. 35 of them, more than half of the times all together, have been Zaya or Kaisa. Without question, the most dominant duo that you can pick from in the bottom lane has to be that Zaya or the Kaisa. And really, surprisingly, you look at the Zaya's win rate when you're talking about the two of them, and the Zaya is really punching above that weight level. 14 and 2. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is coming from a lot of Rakans going through the draft as well. Another champion we're seeing plenty of and pairing it alongside that Zaya, helping them both out quite a little bit, getting that little bit of a boost. Never mind, I'm pretty sure Zaya is strong enough right now to do it on her own. This is right now exactly what we are seeing in the bottom lane, that heat map of Kaisa, Zaya. You may throw in Kalista because of the, the ban situation that she finds herself in. And then maybe, maybe for a couple of these ADCs, you put a Draven in that type of position of these top tier ADCs. But without question, the ones that are getting picked and banned right now the most, Zaya and Kaisa. Yeah, and that Kaisa win rate is 6 and 13. Total other end of the spectrum to the 14 and 2 of Zaya. But the next highest picked AD carry after these two is three games. It's a bunch of them tied at three. Yeah, Kalista has been the most banned one that we've seen at the entire event. But this is absolutely a Zaya Kaisa takeover with Zaya starting to run away with this thing. Re really is. And I think a lot of the Kaisa, I think that we see. There's the difference in those numbers and knowing that we have still some of the most premier players to play the champion Kaisa that we've got at this event right now. A lot of, I'll just say it, LCS performances on the Kaisa are, are kind of muddying that record and win rate. I'm sure we'll see that maybe swing a little bit more so towards the Zaya end of the spectrum as we move further into this Swiss stage. LEC racking up some L's on the Kaisa as well. Ah, poor, yes. poor, poor Crown, he got three of them to his name, uh, just himself. But neither of them are one of, are the only champion with a 100% presence so far. This is just the main event, by the way, we're taking numbers from, not including playing. It's Oriana, Mark. Not what you would have expected coming into this event, but obviously she's been a fallback safe pick for a lot of guys at this event. The, the power and the scaling that is still there for this Oriana, what she can provide in a team fight. You get out of a relatively safe, boring type of laning phase, and then you're going around the map. You're setting up these big plays in these team fights. You're providing your, your allies with this movement speed, this shielding, all these type of things. The Oriana creeping back in time, a tale as old as time, seeing this one come through. And I think a lot of the mid laners you, they might not like to admit it, but I'm pretty sure we're pretty happy to have an old staple like Oriana come to such a powerful position just in time for this meta world. She's still always an exciting pick when she has such a game-changing, teamfight-altering ulti uh, that we've seen used so many times already at this year's Worlds. Uh, one player has some insane stats that I'm going to read out to you, Mark, and you're going to try and guess who this player is. They are, again, just main stage we're taking these numbers from. They are first among all players, every role included, in damage percentage, gold per minute, and kill participation. Who is this player, Mark? Uh, you know, it's a hard, tough task thinking through some of these stats sometimes because you kind of lump around a couple of players when you're thinking about them. I'm going to take my shot in the dark. I'm throwing it at either Chovy with Gen G. I think that he's been fantastic, or I'm going with your boy, the classic Mr. Ruler for JDG. I'd be loving to see a T1 surprise, possibly. <laughs> it's not Kyria, despite how good his bard is. <laughs> he's not up there. But safe, you know, good bets. But it's a surprise dark horse. We are talking KT aiming. Sitting atop the table on all these. This is a guy who has not looked bad on the Kaisa or the Zaya. 
That's a that's a great little stat there to find through and find that it is aiming, topping all of these impressive names, names that are performing at a high enough level that you're jumping to these ones like myself in the first type of one aiming. I love that, that he's coming through. He's dishing out that damage. You know what that? That is a great sign for KT Rolster to prove me wrong. Make sure they are the squad getting out of here. And he hasn't even been able to farm up on a Western team because KT's only played LPL and LCK so far. And it keeps rolling for KT. They just still keep rolling through a tough schedule. Can't wait to see him line up against LNG. The other crazy uh, numbers you can look at is just Gen G as a whole, because four out of the five starters have double digit KDAs through their first four games. And even Poor Delight is sitting pretty cool at a 9.3 KDA. So just below that double digit. Their team KDA is over three and a half to one. It's it's absolutely nutty what they've done through four games. You know, you know what? Even if Delight is lagging a little bit behind in that perspective compared to the rest of the stellar performances from the Gen G teammates, I'm bumping him up to that category because he at least gets the buff of being the Rakan that is annoying the most people at this event with his ability to escape from every single possible chance that you think you have, that you've caught him out. No siree, that ain't the way it goes. And yes, you're right, Gen G have just been so flat out dominant across the board. They do have that series against G2. And I think that there's obviously a little bit still that is to discuss and understand about that series before we're just lumping all this praise onto Gen G. But it really has been fantastic to see this back to back to back LCK champion storm through and really carry that type of power at this world event. And it is still obviously a relatively small sample size, only four games uh, for Gen G. Haven't even matched up against an LPL squad yet, which we know has been uh, their kryptonite internationally, at least this year when you look at MSI. Um, some other crazy ones to look at. I mean, Gen G, JDG are through. Gen G has all the crazier numbers, uh, mostly for the stats so far uh, ahead of JDG. But when you're talking about game time, if you the fastest game time sub 27 minutes for JDG almost a full 12 minutes faster than the slowest team at this event which is KT Rolster obviously they've played a couple of bangers that have gone north of 40 but 12 minute difference is insane that's pretty pretty bonkers to think about that type of difference and everything think about that practically on the rift what is going through how many times you know you're that's using almost your the ultimate. Mad Lions lost to T1 I, oh my goodness how many <laughs> ultimates could you cast in that time how many objectives are popping up and all these type of things that you're thinking about and then if you're going all the way i mean you don't really need to do this but if you're going the solo queue route think about how wacky things get every minute that it goes further into a game yes that is quite a big difference in the game time you don't need me to tell you just 12 minutes is going to be significant a couple other crazy team stats uh number one three of the four worst Baron teams so far at this event are EU squads. And yes, bottom two is G2 Esports. Despite picking up a lot of wins, this I'm talking about percentage of Barons that they've gotten. They're rocking a sub 20%. Despite winning so many games, obviously it's because they had some massive Baron throws in those games. I thought, and hey, the LCS, we're supposed to be the burger flipping region. What's going on with the LEC storming into that territory? We've still had a couple of good old North American burger flips that PO6, of course, have been at the event, so we've seen plenty of those. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, some relatively solid ones coming through from North America where it is almost every single- Against EU. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it is all these bad ones that you're thinking of, these EU teams and these situations around it. And unfortunately, a lot of them, very avoidable very avoidable ones things where you have the power you have the control you only take the time to set things up or take it into consideration these things wouldn't be flipped the way that they are right not a good look for the lec flipping these barons last thing i kind of want to touch on you know again sort of halfway through this opening swiss stage obviously this one's been talked about a bit the new format what are the goods what are the bads far and away the positives have outweighed the negatives so far but you can get these unlucky draws nothing more polarizing than kt rolster has yet to play a western team and the mad lions have only played western teams G getting that full end of the spectrum i mean that's that's just unlucky straight up it is straight up unlucky, and it's one of these things where, again, even if you are kind of massaging around the format, trying to find different, you know, uh, 
changes to it or little things that will allow you to avoid these type of situations, to manipulate the, the movement in it that you are getting that variety. Sure, there are things, little rules, little things that you can change to try and implement that. You're always going to run into something like this, though, where it is just simply bad luck, where it draws out in this type of way. And I think that is one of the things that you have to accept as the Swiss stage. You know, you run it up against what's the pros and cons, and you run it up against the pros and cons of doing the old format and some of the bad luck that you could get into where you were seated in your group and all these type of things. That is a different scenario, and I much prefer, I still think, what we're getting. Right now at the Swiss stage, it is providing a lot more excitement. One of the things that hasn't really been talked about that I've loved so much about this is not knowing until that end of the day what is going on the very next day, what these matches are going to be, that unpredictability that you get in that sense compared to, okay, we're in this group, it's this match, and then it's that match, and then it's this match, and then we wait a week, and then we go back, you know, all these type of things. Very much enjoying this format so far with, with the little disclaimer that, yes, needs some tweaks here and there. But that is a totally different approach to take when you're a team, when you don't have this full week plus to be prepping against the same three squads. You, in most of these cases, have barely 24 hours to say, oh, we're playing T1 now? Okay, uh, I guess we'll do some prep for that. Oh, we got smashed. Obviously, I'm talking about Cloud9. Uh, but for the most part, we haven't had, except for that one day, with all the domestic matchups. We haven't had an egregious draw. You could have had T1 drawing NRG in this most recent round, and then they only win, or they only qualify by beating LCS teams. Nobody wants to see that. Right, so there are absolutely ways and, and disappointments that can come through with a format like this. I think that it is still the perspective of going through and looking at what are the pros, what's the cons, where's the positive, and you realize that we are already gaining so much more interesting you know games and stories at this world's event mainly due to that format change and it's only going to get crazier as this event goes on we're going to do a full preview of all these next round of matchups who we think's getting through and going to continue at the event but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people as always thank you so much for joining and we will catch you on that flippity flip